Adrian Warner with that report. One year on from the riots and the Metropolitan Police Commissioner Bernard Hogan House says officers are still hunting those who were responsible for some of the worst disturbances the capital has ever seen. Almost 3,000 people so far have been charged and many have faced long sentences. Our Home Affairs correspondent Guy Smith looks back on four nights of trouble on the capital streets. For me, it was the most aggressive, hostile, potentially lethal crowd dynamic I've ever experienced. I've never come up against anything that, that seemed so coordinated and so concentrated um, in, in terms of, of missile throwing. When Inspector Andre Ramsey first arrived in Tottenham that night, he had just 21 officers up against more than 400 rioters. Outnumbered and outmaneuvered, he tried to hold the line. As we ran forward towards this, this enormous crowd um, that were hurling just about every, anything they could get their hands on at us, that I received a, a, a blow from clearly a very heavy object uh, that knocked me out. And this is him on the ground. He believes his helmet saved his life. Despite being unconscious for several minutes, when he came round, he felt it was his duty as the leader on the front line to continue. He said the crowd taunted them, gesturing they had knives and even guns. In the distance, I, I could see what I believe to be individuals uh, carrying machetes uh, down by the side of their leg. If a police officer had been separated in any way from my group, um, uh, that could have led to very serious consequences. And not to put too far a point on it, possibly the murder of a police officer. For me, it reflected the worst riots and the worst violence I, I think we'll ever see in our lifetime. And I pray Pastor so. Nimzabunge right. is an influential church leader in Tottenham. He led prayers at the funeral of Mark Duggan, who was shot dead by armed police. He hopes lessons have been learned. One death acted as a trigger. What we're hoping is that the government has heard what the issues are and are doing something robustly to ensure we're not dealing with the unemployment that we see. We're not dealing with the issues around the frustration with institutions around stop and search. We're not dealing with the issues that some young people feel totally ostracized from society. And we're not also dealing with the greed that some of these young people actually have. You walk down the road and in two twos you get stop and search again. Stop and search is still one of the some main of reasons young people People in Tottenham distrust the police. One year on from the riots here in Haringey, the Met is trying something new. All recruits to the borough are given a lesson in the many cultural and social differences of those they will serve. We need to build relationships between the community and the police so we can be as one. Because at the moment we like separated. There's police and there's community. Something the Met is grappling with. Morning, how are you? Its commissioner this morning in Tottenham admitting the scale of the violence last year shocked him. Obviously there was anger on the Saturday night, I think on the Sunday and Monday, then what we saw was copycat. People who thought they were going to get away with crime. But as 2,900 people have found out, we've still been investigating those crimes all this year. They've now been charged with offences, uh, some of them now in prison, uh, and we are still working our way through the footage and we're still looking for them. Three, two, one, here we go. The countdown is on. Anger last year is being replaced by more smiles. The dream that both community and the police have truly moved on. Guy Smith, BBC London News. The uncle of a missing 